So how do you maintain your sanity when you are injured? Today I'm going to talk a little bit about what my approach has been as I've been dealing with my calf and chin issue to make sure that I'm not going totally, uh, totally crazy. So it starts with a plan and I'm going to talk about the three elements that I have been employing um, in my in my plan. The first one is addressing the issue. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Then second is finding a substitute if you can for, for the activity that you're missing. Um, and then the third one is making um, changes for the future. So first starting with um, addressing the, the pain. So um, I have been pretty diligent about making sure that I'm doing all of the foam rolling and stretching that I should be doing for my calf as well as getting treated by John and doing a little bit more hip strengthening. I covered this in detail um, in the previous week and then we're also going to be giving uh, giving you guys a preview of a little bit of what we do for when someone has shin splints which is a lot of what I've been doing so we even go over a little bit of what you would end up doing treatment wise. But the biggest thing is that you have to address the issue. So time just passing doesn't make it better. So you have to do something to correct some of those mechanics um, because yeah, you know, the bone will heal, the muscle um, won't be strained, but you have to kind of teach it what it is it's supposed to do. Now I'm in the phase of my rehab where I'm starting to reintroduce um, some running kind of drills. So that includes things like grapevine, um, high knees, butt kicks, even power skips. What I did was for the first week, I uh, really just kind of did like just on the straightaway. I went on a track, so something nice and soft. And I just kind of just felt it out a little bit. Okay, what does this feel like? When I first did the grapevines, especially going the one direction, I could feel my shin a little bit more. But it wasn't though the kind of thing that was like, okay, this is really throbbing or anything like that. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna proceed with caution. That's what I always say. So I kept it pretty easy. I just went on the, on the straightaway. And then the other thing that I kind of had to gauge was how I felt after. And you don't necessarily know until you try it, but I did about like a mile and a half or so of these drills where I'd walk the turns and then do, um, do some type of drill on the, um, on the straightaway. Um, and I could definitely feel at the end, it was like a little achy um, later on in the night, um, but then the next morning I woke up and it was totally fine. So then I kind of knew that I was like, okay, this is a good, like appropriate dose. Then I did the same thing two days later, but I ended up doing two miles worth of that. So I was able to do a little bit more. Um, and this is one of the things that I always say with when you do start to, um, to address that issue um, and you're starting to transition back to some type of activity is that you want to make sure that, that you're doing it in an incremental way. You know, there's something kind of really unsatisfying about that too, that you're not just like, I'm just starting again, I'm just running, this is so amazing. It's a little bit like, mm, okay, I'm kind of like doing something that kind of looks a little bit like running, but that's really what your body needs. Then what I just more recently did was I was feeling pretty good. Um, so I was like able to do all the drills, no pain or anything like that. I did that for, uh, for a mile. So then I started jogging the turns and then running backward for the straightaway just to kind of really focus on, okay, how is my calf activating um, and how am I pushing off? And I was able to do that for a full mile. So um, I was just so elated to be like just even running the littlest bit. And then I did like one more mile of just some of the drills where then I was like walking in between. Um, and then finally I ran um, two cool down laps. So a half mile after John and John did a uh, workout. So I was just like so happy to be uh, to be running a little bit. Now, the next thing that I'll do is I'll run a little bit longer than I'll walk. So I'll do these like sort of intervals, but this is all about addressing that pain, right? That it's a little bit of like, okay, well, how can I kind of introduce some of this stimulus in order to help this to heal? So at first I needed to just rest, grass in, foam roll, stretch, be treated by John, use the Mark Pro, use the Normatec, kind of do all of those things. That helped then with kind of saying, okay, we're, we're in those initial stages of healing. Now this next phase of healing is all about applying the appropriate stimulus to get our body ready to be able to transition back to something like running.
The other part of the plan was finding a substitute. So I have been doing some really fantastic workouts on the assault bike, um, on the, the Schwinn fan bike. And this is definitely gonna be something that I'm gonna continue to do because I'm getting low aerobic work. I'm getting high aerobic work and anaerobic work. So I'm really getting kind of what I need. And that is one of the things that's so imperative for maintaining your sanity as you're, um, as you're injured is finding something where it's like, okay, you can still get your heart rate up, things like that. What I do really miss um, about running is just spending time outside. So I've been, um, I've been spending a little more time going for walks just so then I can, I can be outside a little bit more. The last step is making a change for the future, right? So I'm already planning what my training will start to look like in the future. So it can't be what it was because that didn't work, right? You can't just go back to that same thing. So there are going to be a few things that I'm going to change. Um, I'm going to be better about my recovery work. So I've really been pretty diligent about um, making sure that I'm doing some foam rolling and stretching after a workout. I'm always good about warming up, but not really doing the recovery work after. So now I just program that in my mind that I'm like, okay, I'm going to do a 60 minute bike workout. So then that means I need 10 minutes prior, 10 minutes after. So now I'm looking at 80 minutes. If I don't have 80 minutes, then that means that that bike portion of my workout is going to be shorter because those two, the warm up and the cool down are my non-negotiables. That's what I would suggest. It's hard to do that. It's hard to be really diligent about that, but your body will thank you. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce my mileage a little bit. Um, I was running like 45, 50 miles a week or so. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce that mileage a little bit because I had started doing more speed work. So I'm getting these really quality workouts, but then I was still kind of layering on top of that. I was just kind of doing some miles just to run just because I love the act of running, but I'm going to be a little bit more specific about my, um, about my training. And I'm going to add in two to three bike workouts, which are going to help to supplement some of that high aerobic and also that anaerobic work that I was previously missing. One of the things that I like to say to my patients is finding the antidote for just really missing whatever it is that you're doing while you're injured is to make a plan. So those elements of the plan are addressing the pain and addressing the injury. And that's through its whole continuum of when you're just doing, you know, like things like foam rolling and stretching to transitioning back to that activity. You need a plan every step of the way. You're not just going to just go back on your bike or start running again and you're just going to run the same exactly we're doing before it just doesn't work like that you know it's like we're going to use this like dimmer switch approach where it's like you're just going to do a little bit more incrementally so that's why you need a plan in order to address the pain and the injury throughout its entire its entire spectrum or else if you don't then you're going to keep winding back in that pain cycle the second thing is that while you're not doing the activity that you love it's really helpful if you can to try to find something that can be um, some type of substitute that also isn't necessarily causing another issue. So for me, it's been a matter of using the bike and then also spending a little bit more time outside um, just because I've been missing being outside. And then finally, you need to make a plan for the future. So for me, this is really inciting me to kind of change up a little bit of the way that I approach my training and I'm excited to see what that brings. As always, guys, I really appreciate you following me along in this journey. It's been really nice just like how many of you guys have like asked about, oh, how's your calf doing? Are you back to running? Things like that. That's really nice. And like my whole intention in sharing this is that you guys know that like, I am supporting you in whatever it is that you're going um, that you're going through because I am you, right? That it's like I have injuries, I need to address them, I need to be better about things. So um, because I have this lived experience, um, I will like take that um, into my uh, into my treatment with you guys. And thank you again for uh, for all of your support. Next week, I'm going to update you guys on a little bit of what my uh, what my running has been like because I'm going to start back up with doing. A little bit more um, a little bit more running the other thing that I'm going to talk about is some reflections of kind of like the way that I think about running and what that means for me